Douglas Luiz to Barcelona. Xavi, the manager of Barcelona, has really went into conversations with Sergio Busquets to go on and really extend one more year at Barcelona. Then Cavallo has gotten out of the camp of the Portuguese under 21s and he has reported back to England, meaning that he's going to play for the England under 21s. And obviously, those other stories are really coming in through. Welcome to Rokani Media Football, guys. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? Smash the like button, comment, and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as known to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. To be exact, I think we are left with 300 subscribers to hit 8,000 subscribers on this channel. And I know we can make it, guys. Please subscribe to this channel and always make it a point that you keep it Rokani Media Football. Remember, World Cup commences on Sunday. Iraq versus... No, it's Iran. It's... Um, it's Qatar. It's Qatar versus Ecuador. That's the opening fixture. Obviously, that is Group A, where there is Senegal and Netherlands. And obviously, I fancy Netherlands to go through and have a match cutter at the host. If at all Senegal really put in a very good shift, they can go on and really go through to the round of 16. With the players they're having, Sadio Mani, Kuli Bali, Eduardo Mendy, and very many others. Ismail Yassar, they're really having good players. Guaye very good player and obviously other players that are really good in the game of football so today rock and david is my name guys if i haven't mentioned it i go into the story of douglas Luiz to barcelona we've been told by Classio Macato, you know we are into the transfer and the world cup period and very many stories are really going to evolve in as far as players are concerned especially those at the world cup but douglas Luiz. This player we're talking about is not at the World Cup, but we've been told by Classio Macato that FC Barcelona are interested in signing Douglas Luiz from Aston Villa. Now, Douglas Luiz was meant to go to Arsenal on the deadline day of the transfer window. What failed him? Villa were just hesitant to the amount of money that Arsenal brought onto the table. 20 million pounds for a player who is left with just one year on his contract. I think it was a deal, but obviously they said no to the player that you are going nowhere. Even Steve Gerrard by then, who was the manager, said the player is here for keeps. And Steven Gerrard managed to convince Douglas Lewis to go on and put pen to paper to his new contract recently. I think like two weeks back, Douglas Lewis signed a four-year contract at Aston Villa. But Barcelona are interested in signing Douglas Douglas Luiz. So, who is Douglas Luiz? 24 years of age, Brazilian, was once at Man City. Man City sold him, sold him to, sorry, rolled him in, I think, in Germany. Then the player came back to the Premier League at Aston Villa. Very brilliant player, press resistant. If you're talking about CDMs that you can really rely on, he's really one. Talk about him being a modern CDM, he is, and people really love him about that. And I believe, if at all, Xavi is looking at him as one of the next players to go on and play at Barcelona, he's right. But is he the ideal signing for Barcelona to go in and play into that CDM position? To me, I believe no. I believe no. If I'm Barcelona, I would go in for Enzo Fernandez. When you look at all the midfielders around Europe right now, the most asset that is in the world football is is Enzo Fernandez playing for Benfica. The other one that I would go on, I'm talking about upcoming stars. One would tell me, why, why aren't you talking about Rodri? Um, I think Enzo Fernandez is like Ruben Neves. Ruben Neves is also a very good player. Enzo Fernandez, Ruben Neves, Alvaro Martinez for Ajax. He's also a very good player. I think uh, this other player, um, Sangare, at uh, PSV, he's really a very good player. So, if Xavi could go on and really look on the Enzo Fernandez, I think it would be really a very good deal. But for Douglas Luiz, I believe in his talent. He's talented, good player. But the project of Barca, I believe, doesn't need Douglas Luiz. He's a very good player, but I think there is nothing that Douglas Luiz, that, there is nothing that Douglas Luiz does that... Frankie de Jong doesn't do better than him. I believe you should always bring in a player who is really having different aspects from the player you are having. Look at look at Enzo Fernandez. Enzo Fernandez can play in a double pivot. 
he can play in a single pivot he can play as a box to box player so in search of a player who is going to go in and replace Sergio Bosquitz I think Enzo Fernandez is in that queue uh, you can bring in Ruben Neves in that queue I can bring in uh, Lisandro sorry Alvaro Martinez from Ajax uh, there is Tinali playing for AC Milan he's also a very good player for him he's a single pivot player I believe those are the players that he should be looking at but Douglas Luiz who really wanted to go to Arsenal and he that deal never materialized signed a four-year deal at Aston Villa when you look at the problems that Barcelona are really having with money I don't believe I should I would have given them advice to go on and sign a player like Douglas Luiz four years tied on his contract I believe he could go for like 60 million pounds yet players like Enzo Fernandez could go for less Sangare could go for less Alvaro Martinez could go for less so I believe they should go on and really do the needful and really think twice on why they are really needing Douglas Luiz who has been tied on a four-year contract when they are players they can get who are really cheap then Gerard Romero you know him he has returned as it's the transfer period obviously Gerard Romero was one of those players that sorry those transfer transfer pundits or experts that put out the story of um of Frankie de Jong that really went on for like three four months into the media until when we got to know that Frankie de Jong couldn't join Manchester United so this time around he has told us that Xavi wants Sergio Bosquitz to stay and renew his contract despite having Ruben Neves and Martin Zubimendi as the main candidates to go on and we replace him at Barcelona so looking at the story it really sends you way down <laughs> in your thoughts to ask why is Xavi tying himself a lot on Chagio Bosquet? Picasso said if you want to build a new castle you have to destroy the old one. He has done it successfully to get out players like Gerard Piki um, very many other players that he found in he wants Jordi Alba out very many other players that he found in at Barcelona that Xavi has really gotten out. I believe Busquets should be thrown out. Him having decided to go on and play in the MLS next season, it should be should be something that Xavi could be proud about. And why should he force him to stay at Barcelona? Him staying at Barcelona does stunt the progress of his projects. It's better to get in another player to play as a single pivot. Why should you keep a player who, when in his presidency, you were thumped by Bayern Munich, you were thumped by Inter Milan when he's playing that midfield area? Meaning that he's the weakness, according to me. Nowadays, CDMs really have big engines and play like box-to-box -box players. With Barcelona having majority of the position in every game they play, don't expect Sergio Busquets not to go on and really add you lots of positives, but he has failed to go on and do that. Now CDMs end a season with close to six goals, seven goals, or like five, six assists. That's it. Look at Casemiro at Manchester United. Look at look at Rodri. Look at uh, Thomas Partey. Look at um, Fabinho. Those modern midfielders now is what is what Xavi should go on to. I don't undermine Busquets. Busquets is one of those players that is really has been onto the world chart for so long. He has been playing very well at Barcelona, but I believe at his age. There is nothing new is going to add Barcelona, and it's better for Xavi to really understand that Sergio Busquets is over. Bring in Ruben Neves. Bring in, bring in uh, the Enzo Fernandez of this world. You get? They'll come in and get the job done. I've seen them going for players like Jorginho. They want them, but he's also 30. Can he get the project to the levels where he wants it to be? I believe Jorginho can do that single pivot play at Barcelona very, very well. So I believe Xavi needs to go on and really look through himself. I think there is no need to give Sergio Busquets a new contract. Why give him a new contract? Why give Sergio Busquets a new contract? For what? He's 30. Is he 30 for that five years of age? give chance to the likes of um give chance to the likes of frankie de jong to play the single pivot bring in the frankies to come on and really get the job done i think that's the way to go for barcelona if at all they really want to make it to the next level and really be so much competitive to the team they were where they're having pep guardiola at 
Barcelona. Smash the like button, guys. Comment and share. Let's go to the story coming in from Chelsea. You know, Chelsea, having gotten the manager of Brighton, they went ahead to get almost the entire coaching team from Brighton, and it followed Graham Potter. And now they've gone ahead to announce Paul Winstanley being appointed as Chelsea's director of global talent and transfers. Todi Boyle and Igibali said Paul is going to be great addition. He's highly respected as key senior addition as we continue to build a world-class sporting team. This is a confirmation to all Chelsea players, to all Chelsea fans all over the world that Todi Boyle believes in Graham Porter. He wants to change the philosophy of Chelsea. Chelsea was a team that was built by Abramovich on buying finished articles. Now, where the world is going, buying finished articles is really expensive. Let me give you an example. Look at a team like Arsenal. If they are to go in to get a player like Bukayo Saka at this moment, they would spend close to 100 million pounds. Martinelli close to 80 million pounds. Emily Smith Rowe close to 60 or 70 million pounds. That's what it's called for to go on and really getting a player like Bukayo Saka. So, what does that mean? To go on and really prevent yourself from spending much, you need to go on and really get in a sporting director who is really going to go on and really sport talent and bring it to your team. This guy has already done it at Leicester City. You've seen, sorry, at Brighton, the likes of Trozard, there is Chiom, there is uh, Quesido, and very many other good players at Brighton. Brighton is playing beautiful football. They are really a better team because of this guy. And Chelsea is backing, backing, backing Graham Porter. I believe Graham Porter had really a very good clause in his contract that he needs to be given time to go on and build. Though Chelsea fans are so much used to, to winning by buying great stars, I think Graham Porter has not agreed this with the boy and told him, please get me a structure at Chelsea. Remember the likes of uh, the likes of Peter Cech was the technical director he left and very many other people that were really in the technical staff of Chelsea left when Todi Boyle took over on Abramovich. So that is the guy known as Paul Winstanley. He's now the Chelsea's director and global talent and transfers. So it shows you that they've realized the mistakes they made with Thomas Tuchel, the players they signed. What was the philosophy they are basically going to sign the players? Nobody knows. But now, they face the reality that they need to go on and really sign in players that are really good to go on and really get them to the levels they want to be. So, congratulations to Chelsea. They might not like it, especially the fans, but in the future, you're going to like the structure that Chelsea is building. Look at Arsenal and how they're really doing their stuff. They brought in Ateta. Ateta really sent away all those world-class players at Arsenal, the Ozils, the Aubameyangs, and very many others, the David Luizes, and then he brought in other players. And obviously, right now, there, there is only, I think, one or two players in the squad of Arsenal that Mikel Ateta never bought. That shows you that it has really given them the best where they are now, on top of the Premier League table, five points clear of Man City. I believe it's better to build a sporting project than being a team that really goes ahead to hire mercenaries to come on and really get the job done for you. I don't really believe in mercenaries. I believe in building a team. United has taken the same path. Man City took the same path and it has paid off. Then Liverpool, the same thing. Every team that is now successful in the game of football has taken the same path. I'll go on and show you Barcelona. They, gonna, they went ahead to bring in mercenaries. They couldn't even get out of the Champions League group stage. So it shows you how bad it is for a team to go on and rely on mercenaries. And I believe they shouldn't go on and really rely on mercenaries this time round. They should build a project that is really sustainable to see to it that it takes Chelsea where it's supposed to be. Kudos to Tony Boyle. He's really doing great things that a footballing team should be doing. Now, Cavalio, you know him. He plays for Liverpool. He's a very talented player. And officially, he has quit the Portuguese under 21 team with no reason given with their now hope he could join the England ranks, having moved to the country back in 2013. So he's a Portuguese player, but he's play, he, had, he was playing for Fulham, played very well, Liverpool bought him, very good player, talented, but England believe that they can go on and really 
in edit him into the English under 21 team where the likes of Ghana, Emily Smith Rowway, the foreign Balogans of this world, uh, the Aaron Ramseys. It shows you that England really has a very good future. The future is really bright for England when you look at this player. But it shows you how England is really improved into his stages and the players are really going on getting from one stage to another and adding Cavalio into their under 21s is really going to be great because that means the likes of in the next one or two years these players are going to take over not so Jacob Ramsey Cavalio there is Emily Smith Rowway Foreign Balogan um Sesegon they're having really a very elite team James Garner they're having a very good team in the under 21s and they're really playing very very well there is even this Arsenal young girl the guy who played at the age of 15 Enumeri the Nigerian 15 years of age he played for Arsenal obviously he did very well and is part of the England under 21 team so guys allow me end this video in here but tell me what you think about Douglas Lewis to Barcelona Xavi trying to convince Sergio Bosquiz to stay for one more year and really extend his contract at Barcelona then Cavalio turning down Portugal under 21 and it's rumored that he's returning back to England to go on and play with England then let's talk about a man of the moment who goes by the names of Stanley or when Stanley, who is really doing a very good job at Brighton, Chelsea have taken him to turn into the global global football director for Chelsea and head of transfers at Chelsea. Thank you very much for watching in. Thank you for keeping it Rokani Media Football. And Rokan David is my name. More is yet to come. And guess what? I'm dropping the Modric story next after him choosing Arsenal over Real Madrid in an interview that was conducted by the wife of Zinchenko. I think you know what I'm talking about. May the mighty Lord bless you abundantly. A sign out for now, guys. See you later.